Hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, I think it's actually uh, International CW Day, I think, today. I might be wrong. Uh, new microphone as well, so hopefully everything's okay. Last video, uh, members of the channel recall, uh, I resurrected this old um, ex-military World War II Morse key, uh, and that works a treat. Uh, and this base is um, a piece of kitchen upstand from our kitchen renovation. And I happen to have another piece left. So here it is, I've still got a, a, a chunky piece left. It's it's weighty, it's it's man-made quartz. Um, dodgy end cut there. Uh, so I thought I'd make a paddle key and I've already started, so bear with me. I'll just put that down. Uh, and I'm just laying it out on this plank for simplicity first, just to get the sizing. So the idea is um, I've got a a hacksaw blade that I've cut in half or to a length uh, that I think is right um, and the idea is that gets screwed into there it's uh, HSS steel so it's as you would expect hacksaw blade it it wants to keep its shape uh, so it's got a bit of um, tension to it in terms of coming back to the centre so the idea is to fasten that on there uh, use some additional brackets I've got some M4 screws which I'll cut down uh, make those as contacts so we can contact that way, contact that way with a pair something like that choosing the distance uh, and adjusting those accordingly so we've got dits and dars uh, with the key on the rig so I'm going to set it up on this piece of wood first and then once I know the sizes and whether it works or not I'll then drill and cut that piece of uh, upstand um, so this is this is where I've got to so far right so just a, a little bit of the finer detail the the hole in the end of a hacksaw blade um, I'm, I'm assuming that's universal here in the UK that's an M4 screw size um, so that fits nicely this is just one of those long screws cut down. I tried M5 first and I tried drilling an old blade but it just shatters you can't really cut this HSS steel uh, so I've managed to source some M4s that I had uh, obviously they're far too long but a little tip is if you put two nuts on to the end of a, a bolt and lock them together uh, do it like that like that if you nip them together with some plies and then that's the length, say that's the length you want to cut from a long bolt, just hacksaw down there while well, this is clamped somehow, I use some, some mole grips just to hold it with the junior hacksaw and then as you wind these off it'll make good the end of that thread you can always file it as well um, so that's how you end up with a shorter bolt so the idea is as I said before the blade goes in there and the bolt goes through there and holds that tight and keeps it at the right height you'll see the teeth are still on the blade because it's a new blade uh, there's no real way and I suppose maybe an angle grinder there's no really way, easy way of getting those off because obviously it's meant to, meant to be strong but it's on the bottom of the key and you could also run some tape along there or some plastic just something to, to cover that but you're not really going to touch it and a hacksaw blade isn't the deadliest thing in the world so I've got no problem with that so I just need to find well cut these down and find the, the sweet spot uh, for these in terms of distance obviously this is a very basic key the, one of the disadvantages is going to be the twang of the blade the longer the blade the more the more of that but I think you're just going to be holding it and you're not going to letting it go like that I think you're going to be letting it come to rest anyway it's just a little project. So these are 25 mil corner braces. I've just got a pack. Uh, what you'll find, uh, or I have, is they're not square. So you put them back to back. So you need to nip them, uh, two pairs of plies, and just straighten them up uh, so they do stand square. And you can do it. Uh, it's fairly easy. I don't know if that's one there. So before and after. Uh, so just need nipping up so the the square right so i'm thinking of these sort of proportions um if you can see there that's if i zoom out about seven centimeters 
three inches or so, something like that. Because uh, what I'm aiming for is, as I said, to use this upstand. Uh, and if I go that way, sorry, if I go that way, that's going to fit. I could go a long ways and make a big long one, but uh, I think that should be okay. So I can cut this again. I'm going to have to borrow the neighbour's saw again and drill this uh, for whatever works on here and I'll make us some contacts. Uh, so I'm still going to keep going with the wood but always mindful I'm aiming for this at the end. So there I've cut one down to length and I've just got a gap. You see there, so I just need the other side doing now. Right so here we are, I've cut them both to length. There's a, a reasonable gap there, you'll probably hear it if I do this. So gap there up there and it's, sitting, it's just sitting in the middle um, if I twang it see that slow oscillation uh, that's just the effect of the camera it's actually wobbling very very fast but, but that's the, the problem of a saw blade but in reality you're going to be holding it I think so with the key on the rig so da's or da's whichever side you do it da di da did da da di da or the other way around da di da did da da it, uh. So this needs to be a bit shorter I think, I'll figure out something on the end of here. Um, so we'll just connect some wires up and uh, see how it works on the rig. But this is about as simple as it gets. Right, I couldn't find any scrap 3 core wire for this test so I've just used 6 core alarm wire. Uh, on the ASUs and possibly the rigs as well, the standard appears to be tip is dits, ring is da, sleeve is common. Uh, and generally accepted on a paddle key the right hand side of the dars and the left hand side of the dits. So right hand side green, uh, nautical reference, uh, the tip is green, the ring is red for left and I've put black as common. So I just need to connect either end to that and uh, bear off some of the paint on that axle blade just so I get a contact and then see if it works. Right I've uh, earned a coffee break so I've wired up um, the wires at this end so red left green right if you remember and black common. You can see there I've bared off the paint there so in theory this this is all now round to go. I've got the plug dangling down there so I'll just uh, I'll just put the rig on and uh, see if that works. Right, so I've just lashed this together in the garage. So apologies for the the mess in the background. So the ASU FTDX10. I've plugged the key in the back. Uh, mode. CW upper. Breaking off, so I'm not going to transmit. Um, in fact, that should work as a Morse key on one side now. Uh, so the right is acting as a normal Morse key. The left, nothing. Uh, key on. So that should work now. So right is dits. Left is dars. So that's the advantage of a paddle key, you hold it, the rig will do the automatic keying for you. So lots of dashes, lots of dots. And if you had a double paddle, um, if you look back to that old video I did with that mains plug as a Morse key, if you squeeze them both you can get dits and dars in sequence as well. So yeah, so that seems to work now. Hang on, I'm not used to a paddle and I'm stood on a wonk. Oh, can't do daddy did. Yeah, so good first test. Proves it all works. And uh, I could probably narrow that contact gap a bit. 
and even letting go there, I don't know if you can see, with that blade just wobbling very fast. But it's still not, well it's slow on the camera, but it's wobbling very fast, still not hitting the other connection. So that's all right, isn't it? <laughs> Apologies for my rather rusty moors. I'm not a paddle user, you can tell, but I'll soon will be. Right, so I'm going to call this a day on, uh, I'll call this part one. Uh, I've proved it all works and, and as you can see, you can't get more basic than that uh, for a paddle key. Well, maybe you can, but um, yeah, quite happy with that. So next thing is to, again, borrow that saw, transfer that under here, um, maybe score the base to loose the wires underneath, or just assume that the feet are going to leave enough gap underneath for the cabling. Uh, it depends how adventurous I get with that saw. It, it was a bit of a beast, if you saw in the last, uh, no pun intended, saw in the last video. So, um, yeah, so part one over, it works. You could leave it like that. Uh, you could make something smaller uh, to take portable piece of wood, not very heavy, uh, but I'm going uh, for this design. So, see you in part two. And speaking of part two, if you're not subscribed to the channel already, if you like and subscribe, hit the bell and then you'll be notified of when new videos are released. And you'll see how I get on with this, this Morse key. 73.